Okay, class, we're back. Today we're going to start by practicing some of the models that we looked at last week, or last class for inflation. It was the demand pull and the cost push. So at this point, either get a whiteboard or just take out a sheet of paper if you want to have it to look at. It doesn't matter. And we'll just practice the two. So uh, go ahead and do that. You can put me on pause right now. And I'm sure you all love to do that. And uh, start it up again when you're ready to go. Okay, ready, go. Okay, and we're back. So hopefully you're all set. So what I want to start with is, number one, draw me uh, an ASAD model that shows demand pull inflation. Okay, that should be, I mean, it pretty much gives it away right in the uh, name. So demand pull inflation. Uh, and then I want you to think of some things that could have caused demand pull inflation. All right, so go ahead and pause me. And when everyone's ready, start it up again. All right, so here we go. So demand, pull, inflation. Remember, uh, you don't even need the L or AS. You just need your a AS and AD. That'll be our output, and that'll be our price level. And I asked you to think of some things that could cause demand pull. It's, remember, it's any positive demand shock. So an increase in wealth, stock, bond, housing market, an increase in confidence, lower interest rates, rising incomes. Okay, and you have your AD curve going that way. AD1, and bam, there is our demand pull inflation, or yeah, demand pull inflation. And remember, the uh, at least in that sense, we have rising output and lower unemployment. So uh, why don't you go ahead and erase that, and then I want you to show me a uh, cost push inflation, what that would look like, and think of some things that could have caused that. So go ahead and pause me right now, and... I'm going to erase this, and when you come back, we should be good to go. All right, so hopefully we're back. Uh, again, cost push, same deal. And we know, yeah, lost a little bit of my axes there. We know that when we have cost push, that could be caused by a rise in nominal wages. It could be caused by a rise in oil or other commodity prices, a rise in business taxes. But that's when we have AS going to the left. Well, I'll call that two, and driving up prices like that. Okay, so I, that's it. That's all you'd ever have to do when you're drawing inflation. Uh, pretty easy, demand pull, cost push. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, you guys maybe can discuss that with one another. Send me an email, whatever you need to do. Uh, go ahead and pause me again. Uh, put the whiteboards away if you need to. And uh, get out your note packets on inflation. We're going to go to the part where it's measuring inflation. This is going to be pretty quick, and then you're going to be working on your own. Okay, pause me. Start me up again when you're ready. Okay, so here we are. Cal calculating inflation. Uh, when you know your CPI figures and the numbers are unweighted, that's what you've done uh, in the past. And we know all you need to do is have two CPIs and you're using a percent change formula. We have it here. So you can see in this example, I gave you two different year CPIs. We just do year two minus year one over year one. We end up with, you can use your calculator for that when we get to it. We end up with 3.8% inflation. But remember we said, uh, and we're going to go to the next page here, that we weight our inflation categories. because We talked about this really, really briefly last class. But we said, for example, if the price of housing goes up, that's going to be way more impactful to us than if the price of taking a vacation went up or the price of buying clothing went up. So... What we do is we break our, our market basket into these categories, and then we weight each category. So here you can see we say about 40% of our, um, our spending goes into the different parts, things that, you know, housing, rent, uh, homeowners insurance, and the such. 20% food, and you can see on down. So literally all we would have to do, uh, as you can see, we would just take that 120 and we would take 40% of that, 48. And you can see that that is now the index 
uh, for that year using the weight. So I want you to go ahead and I want you to do the same thing with each of those numbers. Take 20% of 105, blah, blah, blah. And then do the same thing over here for 2013, okay? And what I want you to do is at the bottom, I want you to calculate what the inflation rate would be if we use the unweighted numbers over here, here and here. And then I want you to calculate what the inflation rate would be if you use the weighted number. And it, there is going to be a difference. Not, not a huge difference, but there will be a difference. And I want you to think about the significance of that difference uh, and why it's important that we use the weighted numbers. All right, this isn't something necessarily that you would do much of on a test. Uh, you're more of uh, just having to use that percent change formula, but I think it's a good th exercise to do to see how it works. So go ahead, uh, use a calculator, fill in these numbers, work with a partner if you're unsure, uh, answer these questions, these five questions at the bottom, uh, and then on the next page I put some of the answers, so don't flip to that until you're done. And then uh, once everything looks good, uh, go ahead and discuss it as a class if you have any questions. Uh, see if you have any issues with any of this. And then I know that you have some other work. Or actually, no, I think this was it. I think this was the homework if you don't get it done. But uh, all of you should be able to get this done. Okay? So, if anybody has any questions, uh, you can ask each other. Uh, you can ask the sub if they can help you. And uh, you can send me an email if you need to. Uh, but at this point, uh, this is basically the end of the inflation stuff that you need to know moving forward. And the next time I see you, we're going to start on something new. Okay, go ahead, get going.